If you come across an Asian film that begins and ends with a wedding and or a funeral, it's probably safe to assume that the film is a homage to the works of Yashiro Ozu. And Edward Yang's 2000 film Yi Yi most definitely is. There's some obvious telltale signs. The film centers itself around the business executive and his family. He worries about the breakup of his family as he frets over the relationships and loves of those around him. Edward Yang gives us 1990s Taipei versions of many Ozu tropes, including meals with friends, weddings, and business dinners that descend into singing. What's fascinating is that Edward Yang ultimately tells a very different story. Edward Yang gives us the story of a family that starts to break down after the grandmother falls into a coma following the wedding of her wayward son. As the family grapples with the consequences, they all start to doubt their place in life. The mother of the young girl goes off to a monastery to search for meaning, and her departure leaves both her husband and her daughter to suddenly explore new relationships. The husband reconnects with his first love, while the daughter starts dating a new boy. All this is somewhat similar to Ozu, but quite different in many ways. Edward Yang's characters don't really abide by traditional gender roles. They flirt with infidelity and betrayals in a way Ozu characters do not. And we see plenty of relationships that seem completely beyond repair. All this is because Edward Yang's goal is very different from Ozu's. While Ozu posited a world in which generations were bound together by the inevitable death of the family unit and the unavoidable coming of age marked by marriages, Edward Yang shows us a world in which people are united by their mutual disappointments in their relationships, loves, and heartbreaks. This is the 1990s and a different country too, and the certainties of the mid 20th century are gone. So people's lives must play out differently as well. The security of the idea that however strong-headed and independent the younger generation may be, they too must one day bow down to the norms of society, get married and have kids, are simply not there. Edward Yang takes note of these changes by transforming Ozu's tropes. Couples interact with one another very differently. Genders follow different rules in the workplace. And the iconic Japanese spaces that are most closely identified with Ozu's films are only ever places of heartbreaks and ruined fantasies in Yang's movie. Yang leaves us with a very different sense of the family and the family home. This is a world without the uniform codes or the neat symmetries of Ozu's world. And Yang shows us all this visually. Then I think it's perfectly fitting that this new age Ozu movie starts with a wedding that features a heavily pregnant woman and ends with a funeral involving an overdressed boy just much the way an Ozu character would have been.